All right, guys, good afternoon. Welcome to the PowerSchool Upgrade webinar. Um, I'm gonna put you on hold just a second um, to do some sound check with some organizers we've got on hold. So if you'll wait just a second, we'll get started. Justin, you hear me? All right, yeah. Justin, do you hear me? Yeah, we're good. All right, you got me? Okay. All right, that's good to go. I appreciate it, man. Okay, so again, welcome everyone. Uh, we had about 250 something individuals signed up for this. Looks like we've got over half of them already in attendance. Um, the link to this slide deck is right there on the screen. Uh, all lowercase bit.ly ps19 upgrade and we are rec recording this webinar and we'll get this shared out um, just as soon as we can this afternoon or in the morning for folks who can't be in attendance before we start let's do some housekeeping and if you can hear me if you would raise your hand please all right and then if you can see the them down. Okay. Okay. All right. Everybody stop raising your hand. All right. All right. Now, if you can see the screen, raise your hand again. Yep. I got it. All right. Good deal. All right. I'll put everybody's hands down. Um, okay. April's good. I had somebody who couldn't hear, but she's got it. All right. Okay. So, just some introductions. Um, I'm Justin Connor, I'm PowerSchool Product Manager, and with me on the line, we've got some guests. We've got Rob Dietrich, Director of Accountability and Technology from Lee County. Uh, we've got Lorenzo Lopez joining us from PowerSchool, and then Cami Nairn's here in the room, Product Manager for Nesis. Uh, she's gonna help facilitate and read the questions off as they come in. So, especially wanna thank the folks outside of the building who made a point to join, help out with this webinar. We're gonna start out with just a little background. I don't know how many on the line are not familiar with the history. If your volume's up on the phone, Connie says she can hardly hear you. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me now? Is that good? How's that, Connie? Can you hear Justin now? Okay. And they need the bitly link. All right. Let me grab the bit.ly link. Put it in our question. Okay. All right, so Cammy dropped the bit.ly link in the in the question. In the question. Okay, no more. Internet's a little slow for some reason. There we go. Okay, so to give you a background, um, this project's been in the works for over a year. Many of the coordinators on the call know that we started talking about this prior to summer last year. Um, we originally planned to upgrade in December of 2028 and then later postponed it to July of 2019 because that's just that's the time of year that it's more convenient for everyone because not everyone's summer or semester breaks are at the same time. So we put it off to then and then had to reschedule it again due to some agency priorities and some some resources that needed to be pulled off temporarily for other items. So we scheduled that for this coming weekend, which is a maintenance weekend, um, hoping to get this in place in time for your teachers to come back. Um, the uh, users in the field get familiar with it before school starts back at the end of the month. Um, another reason this is so urgent to do now is because as of today, and the communication that went out the other day did state August 12th, but that date was incorrect. So as of today, August 14th, this is the last day that uh, PowerSchool will be supporting us on version 11. 
and that's not just North Carolina, that's any customer, um, any customer still on version 11 or below will no longer receive support. So that includes our state reporting, our customizations, um, everything that we need moving forward um, comes to an end today. So that's one reason it's, um, it's imperative that we, we get this moving this weekend. Um, communications have been going out to the field. Uh, we've tried to get it out to as many people as we can. I know we've been in close uh, communication with the Office of Charters to make sure that the charter schools are receiving the same information as the um, LEAs are. Um, I think release notes have been going out. We've been talking about this at home-based meetups, at our CCES conference. So I do think um, the people who are directly involved have have been in the know if they're attending these items or these um, meetings that DPI is hosting. Um, what I'm scared of is the folks who don't receive the communications or aren't reading communications or aren't attending the home-based meetups. And that's, that's again why it's important for districts to attend or um, attend as much as they can or be sure to go over the weekly communications that are shared out. I do want to share that this upgrade consists of a much larger testing team than we typically have. Um, we were able to pull in outside folks. We've, we've got LEA volunteers who, on top of preparing for a new school year, have dedicated their time, volunteered their time to come in and help us test. So our testing team is over double what it normally is. Um, the agency realizes the priority of this upgrade to version 19.4. So we've even been able to borrow employees from other divisions for this. And so far, testing is looking good. We're, we're wrapping it up today and tomorrow. And tomorrow, there will be a call with PowerSchool to, to, to make sure to confirm that we do want to move forward with this this weekend. And so far, we have no reason not to. Um, we're going to talk about this more in just a minute. But the original phase, if, if you've been keeping up with the communication, the original rollout was going to consist of two phases, a phase one that would be this weekend and a phase two which would consist of the student contacts that was originally scanned, uh, scheduled to roll out in January of 2020. And we're going to talk about why we're doing this all at once as we get into some of the other slides here in a minute. I'm not going to spend much time talking about the new features and functionality, but I have plugged in some of the things that are going to help North Carolina most, um, and these have been shared at meetups. We've shared release notes on these. There's been videos shared with coordinators, so most folks should know what's coming as far as enhancements. But for incident management, for example, um, there's a new flag that can be added to behavior. Uh, there's an ability to create quick incidents, ability to reassociate action elements rather than having to delete those and start over, the ability to view and fil filter student roles within the incident itself. Some other admin enhancements within the PowerSchool admin portal. Um, we've got a clock in, clock out feature um, that can be used now for attendance. Your grade setup preferences has changed. There's now a great online PowerSchool data uh, help feature on every page. The ability to lock grading terms in the grade book after grades are stored so that teachers can't go back and enter grades in terms that have already ended. That's going to be huge for us. And student contacts. And again, I know that's the touchy subject right now, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Lots of changes in Power Teacher Pro, which includes uh, teachers now have the ability to manage their own contact bank. I know I've got mixed reviews about that one. so. We're going to leave that right now up to the LEA. So um, if you don't want your teachers coming up with their own, um, I should say comment, not contact. I'm sorry. That's comment bank, not contact bank. If you don't want them entering their own comments, then you need to put that in place locally. But for right now, that's going to be a new feature in PowerSchool. Uh, teachers can copy and paste scores from one column to another within a single section. Uh, they'll be able to import grade setup for courses and sections. This will be a district level item. Locking down grade terms we've just shared a second ago. You'll be able to copy assignments from one teacher to another within, uh, doesn't even have to be the same sections. Um, doesn't even have to be the same class. <laughs> you can copy English scores over to a math class, so I would definitely be careful with that one. But that is 
that is there and and it would be helpful if you have teachers who teach the very same things and their grade setup is similar um, teachers now have the ability to recalculate individual assignment scores rather than just the final score and then there's the ability to transfer scores to another section with another teacher when a student switches classes I have one comment about new clock in clock out for me okay. just a comment was that on the slide or it should have been new clock in clock out for me oh it was on the previous slide okay All right, Lorenzo, I'm going to let you share this. We're moving into our largest impact items that are going to take place over the weekend. So we'll start with FTP, SFTP. All right, can you all hear me okay? Um, yeah, I have a question about gradebook. Do you want that first? Do you want to go ahead with uh, it? Yeah, hold on, Lorenzo. Let's take this question. Will the, will the gradebook lock of terms keep grades from populating from Canvas after the end of term? That's one we checked on, and I'm pretty sure. Lorenzo, did we find out that that it would remain locked? Uh, I, I'm not I'm not sure on that one. Okay, I want to say that Pam went and checked, and we did verify that it wouldn't pass back after it's locked. But we will take that back and check on that. So it would not pass back. We'll we'll check on it. It's supposed to remain locked. Okay. Um, are we able to see previous lesson scores when a student moves from LEA to another LEA? district from the teachers are we able to see previous lesson scores I guess assignments when a student moves from LEA to another LEA I don't think so do you know Lorenzo yeah no I don't believe so that uh, that data is kept in the individual LEA in which that section was originated from and that data does not move from one LEA to another um, I have another question. When a student is transferred to another class, will their previous terms final mark transfer to the new section? So we'll store grades. If they're stored, I'm not sure if the gradebook items would transfer over unless they copy all of those over. Is transferred from another class of their previous terms final marks transfer to the new section now, final marks won't transfer to the new section that would that would require assignments and, and a lot of other things to be in line uh, the teacher potentially has the ability to see some of the data inside of the backpack area inside of power teacher where they have the quick lookup screen um, some of that data may be available there. I think there might be a term grades available for the teacher to see that as well, but it wouldn't be in the grade book just because there are significant differences between one teacher's grade book and another. They can't hear me. <laughs> Will there be QRDs on this for teachers? Oh yes, definitely. Um, many of you know that we lost one of our trainers here in digital teaching and learning and we've got a new one on site and she's been working hard this week to prepare QRDs for um, what's coming up with contacts so that we can get that taken care of. But that is one of our priorities to get some QRDs pushed out between now and the time school starts, especially for the teacher grade book part, Power Teacher Pro. And there's also resources out in PowerSource for those who have access to that. All right, Lorenzo, we'll let you pick up there and then we'll come back and answer any questions. Yep, okay. Um, so inside of PowerSchool 19, um, there was one significant change that was made in the application, mostly for protecting students' um, personal identification uh, from being you know, picked up through uh, malicious means. So regular unsecure file transfer protocol was, um, was removed from the application. So starting in uh, PowerSchool 19.4, um, the uh, only the only way to send data through um, autocom auto send is through secure FTP um, and again that just goes back to the protection of student information yep and so to add to that I know there are a lot of districts if you're a new coordinator there's likely some things that's been set up in the past that were just carried carried over that you may not be aware of so you need to become familiar with what all is being transferred and how um, 
So we'll send out some steps on that also, um, just so everyone is aware of where to go look for these things. We good? Everybody's holding out for the big item. All right. So the next piece, um, this is student contacts. Uh, so this originally was going to be phase two. We had talked to Power School while we were planning this upgrade, and we were going to hide the core contacts page temporarily, like I said, until January, and that would give us more time to plan um, how to clean over, how to clean up uh, the data that's going to migrate over automatically. So there is a new core contacts page that's going to be available um, in our upgrade committee. Like I said, we have several LEA volunteers who've been helping us uh, with this upgrade plan. Not one LEA on that committee was in favor of hiding the core contacts. Um, and after a meeting here on site in Raleigh, um, it was made very clear that we're only hindering you if, if we do not give you access to start cleaning that up now. So you're going to be able to see the core contacts page. You're going to be able to see what's migrated over into those fields on that page. But what we are going to do is leave the North Carolina custom contacts page in place until we get to a point where we can cut over completely to the new core contacts. And Rob, if you want to jump in there and share your thoughts. Yeah, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Um, the, yep. the, yeah, the, I was on that committee and when we were all discussing it and looking at it, we realized that by hiding the contact screen for six months was just delaying the inevitable uh, and that the best time to do it is to just put it out there now and let us spend that time that was really going to be hidden as a time to go ahead and start cleaning it up and working with a plan inside our LEAs to make sure that we could get to that contact screen as quickly as possible uh, and try to get away from the North Carolina contact screen because one thing we do believe is that that core contact screen is a good screen that will have more value in the end once the process is done. Sound good? Yep. And it was real good. I appreciate having the LEA volunteers in the room um, and being able to, to hear their voice and move forward doing what's recommended by the folks in the field. Um, because like I said, initially, this was going to be a two-phase approach and once we started listening to these LEA coordinators who are going to have to be the ones out there cleaning up this information, um, it become clear that we need to let you, let you have access to this sooner rather than later. So we're going to look, I've added some screenshots to some of the slides that we used at the home based meetups. Just so the folks who aren't really familiar with these screens can kind of have some insight. The current contact page, most people should be familiar with these. This contacts page lives under the NC information in the navigation menu. Um, and right now, I put at the bottom, uh, this is a screenshot from a, our current version. And you'll notice there that the tabs currently are listed as students, staff, and parents. And that parents tab is what you're going to see changed after this upgrade the week, this weekend. Um, so most of you should be familiar with these. With these existing contacts, there's a one-to-one -one relationship. So for every single parent, for every time that parent's entered, there's a record. Um, if you've got six children at six different schools, there's at least six records. Um, and the big thing is, and, and one of the main reasons we decided, not only after listening to the LEA coordinators, but we decided to leave the NC custom page in place because we realized that we've got systems looking at the existing um, contact, North Carolina contacts. So TIMS, ECATS, AIG, and there's a couple of others that are currently pulling from the NC custom contact screen. So we have to leave that in place until we have the time to work with PowerSchool to get those reports rebuilt um, and pulling from the new core page. Um, not to mention on top of what we have, I'm sure just like the FTP items, I'm sure lots of districts have reports that have been built or shared with them that they're not with. Um, that could be looking at the NC custom contacts page. Well, and Justin, can I add one thing to that too? Jump in whenever. Um, uh, 
when also when all this happens, if that North Carolina contact screen wasn't available starting Monday when this comes up, all those contacts would have duplicates and it would be clean and it wouldn't be good because really in my district, we're going to be using that North Carolina contact screen for several months because that will still be the best place for us to have the most accurate data till the cleanup is there. So I'm very thankful that we are using both pages for that reason. Thank you. I have a, a question about the custom student contact. Um, so we have to manually move the data in the NC custom student contact to the new core contact screen. Okay, let me, let's answer that one on the next page because I'm going to show you what's actually going to migrate over to the core contacts page. And are you going to be talking about third party systems later? Yes. Okay. Yep. So we have a couple questions about third party systems, but we'll be touching on that later. One thing I want to point out, um, and you're going to see this on a couple of slides coming up, under NC information where I have that circle there in red, you see it just says contacts. Um, well, under the new contacts page, that's going to, I'll, I'll show you that in a second, but it's also listed as contacts. So I could see where that could get very confusing when your data managers are out there trying to figure out where to plug those contacts in. So we've talked to Lorenzo and we do think it's possible to have that um, our contacts link change. So we're going to change the name from contacts to probably something like NC student contacts, just so you can tell your data managers, this is where you update contact, or this is where you have to, regardless of if you require them to uh, keep both in sync at the time. This is the place that we need you to keep up to date until further notice. So that's one change coming. We have three or four questions um, about the custom page. Um, so the information on the demographic screen is going away? No, it's not going away. And I tell you what, let's hold the questions until the end because I think I'm going to answer quite a few of these in the next few okay. slides. Um, so right now, again, looking at your current contacts, these exist in multiple places. And I took a screenshot and tried to squeeze it in there on this slide um, of where all the links are to where you can access the multiple places that the current contacts are listed. So under access accounts, this is where you go to give your parents access to log into the parent portal. Um, many districts don't have this because they use Canvas and they have no reason to go through PowerSchool. Um, so if you go through, if you, if you don't have parent account set up, then you're not going to have anything there. Um, but if you do, you're going to see those at the bottom of that access accounts page, and that's going to be part of what's migrated over. On the demographics page, you've got mother and father and guardian email. Uh, the mother father is fed over to the demographics page from our custom contact page if you hit the move to demographics or move to mother and father. Um, so You've got those on that page. On your parents' page, again, you've got mother, father, and guardian. And then on our contact page, you've got all of the above plus your emergency. So I'm going to keep emphasizing that that North Carolina contacts page information is not going to feed over. None of the information on the NC contacts page will feed over to the core page. Only the items listed in those first three bullets. Um, for our new contacts page, this is the new core page. Again, I'm going to point out there, it's again listed as contacts, but under information. There's new functionality that's coming with this contact screen. Um, if you look there at the bottom, I've got a screenshot showing you where that tab changed to contacts rather than parents, because truly, um, you've got more than just parents in there, so I'm glad that change was made. But now you're gonna be able to search for all contacts. So aunts, uncles, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, um, whoever. Those will need to be searched for before you enter new contacts, just like students. Um, you're supposed to search for students before you create a new record. It's gonna be the same now with contacts, because if this contact already exists out there, you want to take them in and associate it to the students they need to be associated with. Um, so this is going to be a one-to-many relationship. So there will be one contact person who will be linked out to multiple students. And I think this was a duplicate slide. We'll remove that. Or I'm going backwards. I think I'm going backwards. It's been a long day. All right, the current contacts page view 
you should be familiar with this. This is the page that gives you little red blocks when you can't move on and green blocks when you can. This is our page. So just to make it clear to everybody, this is the page that we will keep using. This is the page we'll keep pulling from. So this is the page you need to continue keeping up to date. And then here's a look at what the new contacts page is going to look like. It's much cleaner. I tried to fit it all in there, so this is very tiny print. Um, but when you go to your students, it'll list all of the contacts that are associated with them. It allows you to move them up and down in the order you want them to be contacted in. And going straight across, these are all of the items that were on our North Carolina custom page. And, and Justin, I had a, a principal meeting today uh, before this call, and all the principals really liked the looks of that page. They said it would be much easier for the office staff working with this contact page as opposed to the North Carolina contacts page to make sure who has custody to live with and can pick up. So they like the fact that it does look this way. They also were in favor of it. Good. So what's the migration going to look like? Um, the items that are going to be placed in the core contacts field are going to be pulled from only these four places, mother, father, guardian email, and access account. So you're going to have duplicates. I'm just, I mean, that's a known. Um, so again, that mother of six in six different schools, you're going to have her in there six times as a contact. Um, if that mother has an access account on top of that, then that's another contact. Um, guardian email is going to come over because, as you know, on the demographics page, guardian email doesn't associate that email address with any individual. It doesn't associate it to a student, the mother, or the father. So that's going to come over as its own contact with a no name record. Um, in the coming slides, we're going to talk about that because during the meetups, that's one of the first items we determined that we would start with if we wanted to do cleanup before Friday. A lot of districts are thinking about exporting those guardian email addresses and then clearing that field out so that it um, decreases your cleanup time because that's going to kill a lot of bad records. Um, we've got other districts who are a little more savvy who um, they know how to create or yeah, create uh, custom fields or utilize fields that are already available that aren't in use. You could import the guardian email into another field and then just blank it out of the guardian email field just to save you a little more time. Um, and really, Rob, that, that's, that's the only cleanup that we've determined can happen between now and Friday. Yeah, that's correct. And that, that's a, a major one. Justin, can you go back to the student core contact screen so we can explain a little bit of the importance behind that? Yeah, right there. Uh, if everybody looks, I think you have it on the last contact down there, the one that says no name. That's yeah. what it'll do. So that's why it's so important that we're going to export that guardian email out and then clear it because we want to get rid of all those no names from transferring over because they really aren't associated to anybody. And we just think it would save us some time in the end. All right. Um, I cleaned this up. The item that we had in bold there, it wasn't as detailed. Um, but then when this presentation started getting shared out, it, it hit me that this could have been taken the wrong way. It said originally that nothing from the NC contacts will be migrated. And so I think a lot of folks who aren't familiar or didn't attend the meetups took that to mean that nothing from the NC contacts page would migrate over to the NC custom contacts page that would remain in place. So that, that page is not going to be cleared out. Nothing's going to be blanked out from that screen. So I've given more details here. So the, cust the contacts from that custom contacts page will not migrate over into the new core page. Um, however, the information there will remain. You'll be able to continue to access it and edit it, and that's going to be the place you need to keep it clean um, until, like I said, we we pull the plug on the custom page. Um, again, I'm sharing there that duplicates are going to be created. You saw on the page before. Um, let's see. You've got several examples here, and it could be a name spelled wrong, or it could be a name with a hyphen in it and another name that doesn't. I mean, 
it's going to take a lot of work cleaning it up and consolidating records. But again, we are not forcing you to do this. We're kind of letting the districts drive this. Um, I'd like to say we're not in a hurry to move, but we're in a hurry to move because the longer we put this off, the more bad records that are going to continue to be um, created. And like I said, we need to get to some point where we can move all of those reports over to where they're looking at only the core contacts. Uh, we'll talk about the table differences. Um, so the migration, it's going to happen. If we were to hide this to where districts on the front end wouldn't see the mess, then the migration still takes place. And all that data from those four fields that we discussed will be placed in this new table called the person table. Um, the contacts table is still going to remain. So you're still going to have your contacts um, in place, your contacts table, which is the previous table. But that new person table will be the one populated with all of the records um, from those four fields, mother, father, guardian, and access accounts. Um, there's a consolidation tool, and you can barely see it. I took a screenshot and put it at the bottom here. You're going to have a way, if you're a smaller district, um, you may want to break up into groups. Rob suggested, you know, he might pull in and sit with his coordinator, or data managers, hold their hand, and go through these records one by one, consider which ones to keep, which ones to consolidate, or which ones to delete altogether. But there is a tool in place. Um, Lorenzo, do you want to share anything on that? Uh, no, not on the consolidation tool. Okay. All right, so um, we showed this at meetups last week, but currently there's no QRDs on it. Again, because we've not really put out an expectation of when this cleanup needs to be completed by. So once we get through the upgrade, um, and we're in a good place there, then we're going to start putting out resources on helping you consolidate. So smaller districts may want to come in. Larger district, districts may want to figure out how this can be exported and imported. Um, in large amounts. So that'll be things that we talk about in the coming months. But right now, we just we don't have an answer. We just know that it's best to rip the Band-Aid off and let you have access to, the, to this now, only because it's happening anyway. Uh, again, I, I said, if we hide that plug-in, it's still going to happen. You're still going to have migrated data uh, that's going to have to be consolidated at some point. Um, during the meetups, we asked these four questions. We had folks get in groups. We had group discussions. And these were the questions we asked power school coordinators. Number one, what do you see as your greatest challenge? In red there, I've kind of summed up the responses that we had. Timing is going to be a challenge. Getting the communication to principals and data managers so that we know um, there's going to be time needed to pull folks out of the building to get this cleaned up and to let your data managers know where to keep what accurate. Um, can your data managers handle this conversion process? Uh, most folks thought that with careful guidance, face-to-face -face working sessions um, with the power school administrators involved, yes, it can happen. They can handle it. Um, we all know, I mean, <laughs> we were all stressing originally, so everybody's going to stress about this, but it, it is what it is, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. Uh, what type of training do you see as needed? Everybody agreed that step-by-step -step guidance needs to be given from DPI. I know there's some larger districts who are kind of working on their own that I'll be trying to, to work with to figure out a plan that will work for the whole state. Um, once we have a final budget, we've already re realized that there's a need for multiple regional workshops that will be held not in Raleigh but out in your regions so that we can reach as many people as we can. And then just making sure clear expectations are given along the way. And then the big question that we saved for the end, how long do you think this is going to take your district? Rob, you want to share your district size and how many records exist? Yeah, I, I have a district of about 10,000 students, and I believe that I'm going to have anywhere from 60 to 70,000 records that I'm going to have to end up cleaning up. And after the talking with the data manager meetings I had Monday, I think we're all pretty close to believing we could probably have it done in about six months. Um, and they are all in agreement. They all did want to get meet in a room and to make sure that because a, a contact 
might have been created at another school because they're an emergency contact for one kid that didn't migrate over, but they were listed as a mother or a father at another school. So it's just a way to try to grab as many people as we can. But again, I'm only a small district of 17 schools. So for us, that is the best way to do it. But we anticipate with the amount of records we're going to see and the duplication occur, we're, we're estimating about six months to fix it. Okay, so the answer is varied on this. Smaller uh, public school units shared that they thought it'd take them six to nine months, while the larger ones thought it would take up to 15. But our average response response from most was right around nine or 10 months. Um, what I'm thinking, um, and we've not had enough internal discussions to see what this might look like, but I would be shooting for the EOI cutover of next year. I don't see why we'd want to stop using it in April or May when we could just do all of it over the during the EOI process and then have the new page up following EOI. But there's discussions to be had there. Um, here's some things that need to be considered by public school units. You need to go back, work with your districts, try to figure out what third-party connections are currently pulling from what, especially the custom contacts page. Um, you, you've got Blackboard, School Messenger, there's multiple. You, you need to know how those are set up. So what, what's not gonna continue feeding once we do pull the plug? And get this in the works with those vendors so that your contacts don't get lost in their system. Also, uh, what connections could be writing back, which we shouldn't have any. Um, what local reports do you have that are pulling from custom contacts? Because those will have to be uh, rewritten. We've shared what DPI reports and um, applications we know are touching custom contacts. And then the big thing you need to know and let your data managers know, let your principals know, let your tech directors know, we are going to continue requiring you to keep the NC custom contacts page up to date until those reports get switched over. And then the FTP item that Lorenzo touched on earlier. Some things that DPI plans to do to assist you with the migration process, migration and cleanup process. Um, we're here to help you with this conversion. We, we know it's a monster and we've been out in front of it for over a year and now it, it's here. So we're going to help you. We realize what this is going to do, um, the work it's going to create for not only uh, leadership at the district level, but individuals at the school level. Um, so we're here to help you with, with that. We're going to help create step-by-step -step processes that will be shared out in QRDs and webinars and workshops. And we're going to continue with the communication. Um, I feel like we've, we've done a pretty good job with communicating this upgrade but we're gonna to continue to over communicate um, starting now and throughout the process. And then over the summer of next year, whenever we decide to cut over, um, we'll still be there to help there. Again, we're gonna offer these regional workshops, whether it's, I mean, I can't tell you right now, not knowing what kind of numbers we're looking at, but we do wanna get out there and pull as many people into a room as possible, allow you to bring your lead data manager or whoever you can trust to sit there with you and walk through this cleanup process. And we'll do just enough of that to where you can go back and handle this on your own at the district level. And hopefully on top of that, maybe host some regional meetings and bring over some uh, some fellow coordinators from surrounding counties and have them come to your district or meet up and, and do this as a group. Um, but whatever it takes, we're gonna be flexible to help meet your needs. As long as internally, we don't find a reason that we have to cut this over quicker than we've shared. And after this slide, we'll take some questions. Here's some things we already have in the works just to help you, help your users um, keep the right pages in place. Lorenzo is working on a banner that's gonna be at the top of both core and the custom page. And that banner is just gonna be a reminder and include a link to the other page so that every time you touch that page, you're given the option to, or a reminder to jump over to that other page and enter the same information if you're keeping both pages in date which you may as well start doing. I know for larger districts, that's gonna be a pain, but the longer you 
keep one up and not the other and not the other pages, uh, the more of a mess you're going to have later on. I sent in a question this morning. I don't know, Lorenzo, if you've had a chance to look into this, but a question was brought up by a large district asking if we could hide the, the parents link, at least, just to remove one page that has to be kept up. Yeah, so the, the par hiding the parents link, the only thing that's uh, contained inside that page that I would be concerned about is the guardian alert. But uh, I mean, it, it could be hidden, but uh, you know, we have the, the, the alert there that um, I'd be concerned about. Okay. So we'll hold those discussions internally. Um, renaming the contacts link, as I shared earlier, we'll do that so that you know which one is the NC custom contacts link that you're expected to continue keeping up to date. And then QRD creations to assist in the planning and cleanup. On the road last week, we talked about two QRDs that we were gonna get out there this week. Those have already been created. We're just putting them on the QRD letterhead, and cleaning them up a little bit before we publish them, publish those out to to the public school units. So look for those either this evening or tomorrow. Those QRDs are gonna be how to export your contacts from the custom contacts page, how to export your guardian emails, and how to clear that guardian email field out so that you don't pull over those no-name records. Again, this is something you don't have to do, but it's something that on the road, we, we kind of felt like if we were gonna go through this cleanup process, this would be the first thing we'd get rid of. Because again, you cannot associate the Guardian email to any of the um, contacts that pull over. So you'll have an email address that pulls, but you won't know which parent to tie it to or which uncle or whoever. It's just an unknown. So unless you want to take the time to do your homework and try to figure out which email address belongs to which contact, I would definitely clear those out. And instructions on that will be coming this evening or in the morning. All right, we'll take questions. Okay, well, first I have a couple of comments from Russell. Um, it says, remember when consolidating that if you delete the access record, the link to the student record is broken. All right, mm -hmm. All right. and then um, mention that the searching for contacts, you must uncheck the option to only show access accounts and to check include inactive. Yeah, that's a good one. So by default, thanks for pointing that out, Russell. By default, once we roll over on Monday, when you go to search for contacts, at the bottom, it's going to say, it's going to have a checkbox. And Lorenzo, that's something else we wanted to ask you about if we could have that changed where it's not default. But if you leave it by default, it's only searching for contacts who have the access account set up. So for most of us, we're going to want to uncheck that box because you want to find all of the records before you start consolidating, not just those with access accounts. Well, and, and that's not, also, that's not just with access accounts, that's also inactive kids. You want to make sure to check, include inactive students in case you have grandma or someone else who had a child who graduated who's now associated with another kid. So you want to always, I would say, include inactive kids in that search as well. So that might answer Wendy's question. Will the migration occur only for active students? It's everybody in that contacts table. And that was some other things. Again, this is something we're leaving up to um, the districts to decide, like how much do you want to clean up before Friday? But I've heard people say that they're going to take all of the inactive students and remove the mother, father. So the more they can get rid of, the better. Um, the only thing that concerns me there is you do have folks later on who may come in and ask for certain items. Um, Rob, had, have you discussed that anymore in your district? Yes, we have. I I have discussed it a little bit. I am pretty hesitant to take all that out just because I never know what someone might pop up or need at any given time. So I don't know that I'll be doing that. Okay. In the instructions about pulling guardian email out and clearing it, can we also get how to put them how to put them back, import them back in after the migration? Well, okay, so you can import them back in after the migration, but it's going to do the same thing. Correct me if I'm wrong, Rob. Will they have instructions for that? What I we have were not tested about. that. I have not tested that, but I have heard, I believe I have heard that that is what happens. And I think Russell tested it. I, I, would, I think somebody did. 
But what we were talking about doing is importing it somewhere else just so that it's not in that um, contacts table. But yeah, we can we can definitely send, I think we already have existing QRDs that show you how to import. So we can bundle all of those and share them. And really don't think there's any rush to import those Guardian emails before Friday. What you want to do is get them out of there before Friday and then you can look at pulling them back in however you want to after the migration takes place over the weekend. All right. Will phone numbers have to be formatted in any way? Lorenzo, can you answer that one? Mm. So I think what's going to end up, and I don't know, I, I'd have to check on this because I know sometimes phone numbers will have like an EXT inside of them. Um, I'll, I'll need to look into that just to be sure. I don't want to say something incorrect. Okay. okay. Um, in the new contact area, can we add the Guardian email there? In the new core page? Yeah, you'll be able to add them, um, give that guardian a relationship and plug that email address in. But again, you'll want to search and see if that contact already exists, if you know who that guardian email belongs to. Okay. Rob, what all are you exporting when you export your guardian emails? Uh, when I export my guardian emails, I'll export the grade level, the school they're in. I'm going to export their the mother father that goes with that child and I'm going to export the student number all the demographic data I can on them and then the guardian email as well just so I can have some sort of connection between them so the mother father plus the guardian email grade level and school just so I know where to find that student um, I don't see a page called NC custom contact is it the page titled student contact it is and that's the one we're going to want to change to NC uh, student contacts. All right. So in the left in the navigation menu, it only says contacts, but once you click on that, it opens up and the title of the page is student contacts. It's in red, isn't it? Is it in red on there? Mm -hmm. No, that's on the staff student import. Okay. All right. What if we export out all fields from the different screens? Can we not then delete everything except demographics so we do not have so many duplicates? question what do you think Rob um, I've I've heard of that and and I know other people do that I just have a big problem personally deleting all that because I never know what's going to happen with the upgrade coming up I would rather handle now again I am a smaller district but I would rather handle the mess that's coming and work with what I have and clean up what I have than delete it all and then something happens and then the right information isn't in the right place. So I don't know that I'm leaning that way. And you want to check and see again if, you, if you've got other vendors using or pulling mother, father, whatever, you want to make sure they're pulling from the page you're going to leave in place. And Justin, I think that one thing that is kind of key to remember is we're cleaning all this up. If if we, which I don't think has been mentioned yet, if we clean up myself and I am listed with all three of my children, those records will go from six plus records down to just one because when you consolidate, it's going to get rid of that many records in one parent. Does that make sense? So while the cleanup is a daunting task, I think that as we begin to consolidate records, it will consolidate a lot of records at one time when you clean up one child, if that makes sense. Right, because you're cleaning it up for multiple children at once. Yeah, so I think the cleanup process you'll see will get quicker and quicker the more you go in and consolidate and delete. And that's one of the reasons I wouldn't want to delete it. Yeah. And, and I think that's one of the reasons I wouldn't want to delete it, because if I can clean them all up and work with what I have, I'd, I'd rather do that. Right. Okay. Good advice. Um, thank you. Uh, next question is our guardian email fields may have two email addresses separated by a semicolon has the field been tested with the semicolon i want to say that wasn't cms right i think cms tested this and said that only the first email address migrates 
Suzanne, if you're on the line, you can chime in and we'll read your response. Now, Justin, I, I don't know. It's one thing that has been added as well, which we can talk about since you're talking about in that field, you're basically saying there are two emails in that one field. On the contact screen, it's unlimited. So you could have three or four emails on there uh, listed for one individual. Isn't that correct? Yes. I just don't know if it's pulling all of them. Will it migrate all of them? No, it, it, I don't think it'll migrate on them, but another positive for the contact screen is that you, they, you, you'll have multiple places to put those emails instead of just listing them in one field now. Oh, I got you. Yeah, moving forward. Okay. If we don't clear the Guardian email before Friday, will we have to touch every new core contact record later to remove that Guardian no-name email? And is there a QRD that will guide me through cleaning that field? There's no existing QRD, but yes, if you leave it, there's going to be a record for that email address um, in the core page. But that's something we will be working on once we get through this upgrade with the other items. Okay. Okay. Oh, let's see. After the initial migration this weekend, will items can I lost my question. Will items continue to be migrated between the two or do we need to enter it enter info in both places? I think the answer is after the migration, you're not going to keep migrating. Um, so I, let's just take a look at what's going to happen next Monday. If I come in Monday and I enter, if I enroll a new student and I enter their information on the NC custom page that we're expecting you to keep up, um, if you copy over that mother father, like we do now, that's going to be fed over to the demographic screen. Correct, Rob? If I'm wrong, slow me down. No, I, you are correct. It should. It doesn't lose its functionality after this from anything that I've heard. And then from there, that's going to roll over to the core, but they want to be associated with that um, mother father in the original con uh, contact type, right? The, Until that's you my understanding. Yeah. So yes, for mother so, and father, but not for the rest. They'll have to be the aunts, uncles. They'll have to enter. Both yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Other than mother, father, you're going to have to add the rest of them in both places. Okay. Um, all right. Several questions. Um, during regional meetings, it was noted that we should not enter the mother and the father on the demographics page. If this is still true, can the fields be locked or grayed out to view only where users cannot enter them? That's something we can have more discussions on, but one question I did take back to Power School after uh, being on the road last week was, is there, um, is it in the works to get those fields off of the demographics page? And Lorenzo shared with me that um, that would be something that would take years to get away from. So at this time, you're still going to have those fields on the demographics page that need to be kept up. Um, Lorenzo, are you? How do those core fields feed back over to demographics? Yeah. So when the when the migration happens, um, those legacy custom fields are going to be are going to be linked through that migration. And so um, yeah, if it's the mother, right? For instance, uh, mother's Jane Smith and Jane Smith gets created as a core contact. If somebody modifies the name Jane Smith on the uh, demographics page, it will keep in sync with the core contacts page, um, which also has Jane Smith. So if first name or last name is changed in either area, it will update the, um, it'll update the field in the, uh, in the reciprocal area um, based on that, on that mapping that has been done. Um, now it doesn't take into account any like merging or changes that may be made, but from a straight migration, there is a link from the mother field to the legacy contact type of mother in the new context page. And the same thing is true for father and uh, some of the other um, core fields that may have been migrated. I may be wrong, but I think the question 
I think I know where that person was going. Um, unless you go in and associate using that um, other or original contact type, if, if you do that for the mother, if I go in under original contact type and I say this is the mother, then that instantly feeds the demographics mother field. So I think the person is asking, is there any harm in locking down the field on the demographics so that when they force them to connect that original contact type or page, it feeds over to the demographics and there's no need to change it in both places. Yeah, I mean, at a core, that, that, is, that is possible. And I know some districts in the United States that have done that. Um, so the possibility is there, yes. Um, then I think maybe separate conversations need to be had on, on whether or not that's something that we're willing to uh, look into. Okay. So can districts do that themselves? If, wanted to if they know how. Yeah. All right. All right. If it has a comma between the two in Guardian, this is Russell. If it has a comma between the two in Guardian, both will migrate for the Guardian. One is primary and one is additional. Russell's not sure about the semicolon, but if it has a comma, he says both will go. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, let's go. Let's switch up a little bit. They have a lot of questions about third-party systems. Um, I think Mr. Dan Hicks has got the most biggest um, concise questions. A communication went out on the tech director's thread stating that issues will occur with third-party vendors like Blackboard, Destiny, et cetera. Can you discuss the known issues? We want to make sure our communications don't break as a result of the upgrade. All right, so if, if the problem is our third-party vendors that we work with, um, they're not pulling off from the same fields, from the same page. We've got a lot that are pulling from the custom page, so it's, it, it depends on how it was set up originally. But yes, there are going to be, um, I'm trying to think through this. Um, if it's in the NC contacts page and that's what they're pulling from, then you're good to go because none of that's changing. Um, nothing is going to be pulling from the parents table because that table's not in place yet for you guys, so you're good on the core contacts. So whatever's on the core contacts, if that's a mess, you don't have to worry about it because you don't have anything currently looking at that parent or person table. I keep saying parent, but it's person table. Um, Lorenzo, as far as what's being pulled out of the guardian fields or mother father, those aren't those are in the contacts table, and that's not changing, correct? Yeah, that's correct. So, in my opinion, unless somebody on the line has other information, I don't see that anything that you're currently pulling from is going to change. Uh, Justin, I, I have been in communication with Blackboard because they said that the way that PowerSchool communicates with Blackboard currently, which I go into Blackboard I, and it logs into PowerSchool kind of on the back end, is no longer going to work. So I am working on them to resolve the problem so that I can get my data flowing back in the Blackboard quickly. And um, once I know more, I'll share that with you so you can share that out. But I'm not, I am expecting Blackboard to not work for a few days as I work that out with them. Okay. Um. Will we be able to delete files in this through DDA? I don't know what this is, Amy. Um, and she's also going to have a second question. Will we be able to export the current contacts, reform them, then import them back in? I think we talked about that yes. into the new text. Yep. So as far as what files to delete, Amy, I think you need to clarify. Yeah, if you're asking about, it depends on what table you're looking at. Lorenzo, I don't know where this new person table lives. I've not seen it. Yeah, you may be able to access it using the Data Export Manager, but it's not going to be available via DDA. Um, okay. And just as a general blanket statement, most new features in PowerSchool um, are going to be made available inside of the Data Export Manager and, and won't be made available via DDA. Okay, thank you. Export Data All right. 
I'll read through several of these. Um, several of you asked about the third party, so I think we've um, answered that. Um, see what else we have out here. Okay. Maybe I am underthinking this, but why do we need to be so worried about cleaning up contact for inactive or graduated students? Can't we just leave them out there and clean up if an inactive student returns? So these contacts are going to come over as as contacts. Um, I think we get confused often when we think about students and all these contacts as being associated to the student, but they're associated with multiple students. So you may have an inactive student with a grandparent who is still a grandparent of an active student. So that's where the consolidation comes in because which one do you want to keep? Which record has the most accurate information? And I think that's one reason that Rob is hesitating on getting rid of any because you don't know what you're getting rid of. Yeah, and the contacts aren't going to come over as active or inactive. They're just going to come over as a contact period. Okay, we use the guardian alert on a regular basis on the parents link. Will we be notified if that page is going to be hidden in order to allow time to export the guardian alert prior to it being hidden? Yeah, that idea just came out today. So I would say for now you're safe saying that that's going to remain unless unless we find out otherwise after having further communications, discussions. So Laura, I think we answered your question. If I have three children in different schools, this will create my contact multiple times. So that's yes. Yes. Um, so all schools can see all contacts now? Yes. So when you go in and search, you're going to be able to see contacts, not only that are in your school, in that particular school, but it'll be searching for contacts throughout the LEA. Already an email again. Will it be wiped out after this weekend? I guess if they haven't cleaned it out, will it be? No, wiped it's out? it's only going to be wiped out if you wipe it out. We're not we're not doing anything with your data. All right, and Melba, I think we asked answered the question about inactive students. Do the access accounts have to be enabled for this? No. If they have an account already, if, even if it's disabled, it's going to carry over as a contact. Okay. Question for Rob. What do you intend for the group meetings to look like when you bring in your data managers? Good question. Rob just sent me a text saying he's been kicked out of the webinar. Oh, no. Oh. All right. We'll come back to that one. Lorenzo, are you there? Not a good time. I, I am here, yeah. Okay. I know it's, it was scheduled to end at 2, so I was hoping it didn't kick everybody out. So, it's not, uh, so we just answered this question. Will mother, father, guardian email fields be cleared when the new contact is created or merged? And that was no. No. All the third party questions, I think we're going to need to review and answer back later. Um, somebody wanted to hear Russell's first point again, but I, I've hidden my answer question, so I'll have to go find that. I'm still in. Are you keyed out? No. Okay. okay. Um, well, my screen just went blank. That was me. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, there it is. Um, what is being deleted from the demographic screen that we need to clean up? This is the screen we use most. Nothing's being deleted, right? Nothing? No, nothing's going to be deleted. Nothing's going to be deleted from the demographic screen unless you, yourself, your LEA, or your charter deletes it. Okay. What is the deadline for updating the NC custom contact page? The deadline for updating. You're going to continue keeping that page up to date until further notice. Um, so until we get a better grasp on what the districts need and um, as for the time that's going to be required for the cleanup, we're going to continue using that page. So once we know um, 
once the districts start this process, we'll get a better understanding of how long it's really going to take. And so we'll we'll communicate in advance when that page is going to go away. But up until that point, you have to at least keep that page current. If you delete the parent access account on the access page, then it should not create a contact, correct? I thought they weren't supposed to delete. If you delete what? The, the parent access account. Yeah, if you delete it before Friday, it will not create an account for that. Right. But you probably don't want to delete them. Yeah, because the first thing you're going to hear, I mean, if, if your parents are used to using it and you delete that account, and I understand where you're coming from, that's just one less record that you'll have to mm -hmm. clean up later, but that's the one that the parents use to log in, so you'll probably hear from parents if you do that. What is pulling from the demographic screen? Did you just answer that? Mother, far, father, guardian, email. We can delete it if the students are inactive or graduated. <laughs> you can. Yep. Again, this is a this is a district decision. There's a lot of things. It, I mean, it depends on the size. If you're a small charter, I know what I would do. I'm not going to share it, but I've got my thought. <laughs> you, um, for inactive students, yes. If you want to remove those parent access accounts, that that would help. There's a lot of specific third parties. ADO. Can, Connect, instant connect. We'll review those and get some answers. Yeah, back. on all these third party questions, we're, we'll continue looking into these and get answers out. And we'll try to take the questions that are coming in and put together a, an FAQ to get out so that you can share it with everyone in your district that needs access to it. Russell's got a comment on there. You probably need to read if you can get to your question. I can't get to the questions anymore. <laughs> Third party, all these are third party. Yeah. All right, Kevin, I think we answered yours. If we keep the North Carolina contacts updated, new students, changes, etc., the changed information will migrate later to the current contacts. It can be your mother and father, right? Um, but not everything will migrate over. That is, do we also have to enter new information now into the core contacts? So some of it, Kevin, yes, you do have to enter. Sorry, Tessa. Um, just the mother and father will go to demographics and then that'll go to court. If I'm understanding right. Yep. Yep. Um, QRDs are going out by Friday. I think that, I think everybody else, I'll, I'll keep looking through the questions, but I think they're all repeat questions. Well, it's after two, too. So it might have been a time. But, um, I don't know, because there's a lot of people still in there. Yeah. It should go over. Yeah. Yeah, I'll All right, so is she. Party. Yeah, we've got a lot of repetitive questions in here, and we'll, we'll condense these and get them out in the document, um, hopefully by morning. Uh, maintenance. Again, I put this up here as a reminder. Maintenance is scheduled to begin this Friday at 5 p.m. Um, unlike what we've done in the months past where we asked Power School to take the page, the maintenance page down immediately, I have asked them this time to notify DPI so that we can get in there and kind of poke around and make sure that everything looks as it should before we take that page down. So you won't have access as quick as you normally do, but we hope to get it to you sometime by Sunday afternoon. Barbara has a point about deleting the parent active access for inactive students. Will that it affects students that are active in that same family if you delete it for an inactive. We had a question there, Lorenzo, you may be able to answer it. If it's tied to the same exact email address, will that wipe it out in all places? If the parent access account has the same first last name with the same email address and you wipe it out from one student, 
will that also remove it from the other student? I think if you're just removing the association from the inactive student, you're still going to have an account created or a, a contact created for that parent if they have an association to another active student. Okay. So it would almost kind of be pointless if they already have an association to an active student. Wendy okay. says she tried it and she did that and it did not wipe out the other student. Okay. Yes. Yeah. As long as you're not deleting the access account or the parent account altogether, I believe. So Lorenzo, is that something you would recommend or not? Uh, now, what, what, am I, what am I recommending or not recommending? <laughs> parent access accounts for inactive students, even if they have other active students. They delete the parent access for an inactive student and there's an active student that has that same parent, is it going to affect that active student? Well, I don't... Um, no, 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 I don't think so. So the parent access accounts for all intents and purposes act exactly the same way as what the new context module does. So you have one parent access account that has multiple students associated with it. And when the migration occurs, those student associations are going to be made along with that. So it's not going to hurt to remove that um, that student from that parent access account, it doesn't help or hurt, in my opinion. That's you know the the guardian uh, or sorry the uh, the parent portal access accounts are going to require really the least amount of work um, compared to all of the others. So I, I wouldn't right. recommend focusing any amount of time on trying to clean up access accounts because they're already consolidated by nature. Yeah. And that's a very small percentage of what's going to be migrated. Right. Um, and then maybe a final question. I'm a charter school, so what would you do since I'm my own LEA and district? I'm trying to prepare and work with my other charter schools in the area. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of charter admins, and I think it depends on the size of your district and what you're requiring currently. Um, I've heard from some that are so small, they're new charters, they're just going to wipe everything out and import it in. Um, and there are templates out there that we're going to be sharing. So that's a conversation I think we need to have on the side just so I can kind of determine everything that needs to be considered. All right. Jacqueline's asking about Custom Springfield. Will they go away? I guess it's their local Custom Springfield. No. But that's on that. All right, and that's it. <laughs> okay. Um, I hope we've explained things as thorough as we could. And looks like we had nearly 200 people on the call so like I shared this is going to be shared out this was recorded so we'll share it out so that you can review it um, we've got just a couple of days left to do what you're going to do with the Guardian emails and Tess has already created those QRDs we're just polishing them up and we're going to share them out within the next 24 hours so be on the lookout for those we're going to go ahead and send those out to the entire um, group that we sent this invite to just so if it doesn't get in the right hands it can be forwarded on um, we appreciate you joining them. I can't believe we've not been kicked off yet because we've been over our <laughs> limit. But um, there'll be some more questions um, or some more clarification coming out within the coming days. Be sure to check out the bulletin this Friday. We're going to have as much information in, as, in that as we can. Um, and then I'm looking to do another webinar next week after you get settled in for the first couple of days. Um, just to kind of go over things we've seen and we've experienced after the upgrade. Um, I want to get you through the first 10 days as smoothly as I can. So just know I'm here to help. We're here to help. Um, if there's any other questions, feel free to shoot them to me in the email. Um, we'll try to answer as many of these third party questions as we can in the coming days. So I appreciate you guys joining. I hope you have a great afternoon and we'll talk soon. Bye y'all.